Hey everyone, welcome back to A Geek's Garage. So what are we doing today? Today we are going to be putting the timing belt back onto my engine. And from my standpoint this is super exciting because that means that the engine's really starting to come back together. So uh, what you're going to see me do today is get the timing belt on. Uh, I'm going to use a couple of uh, tools that I got uh, from an eBay seller uh, for putting the timing belt back on here. Specifically it's a tool that's used to get the right tension on uh, the idler pulley and I also got some uh, lockers uh, that'll hold the cams in place for when I'm putting the belt on. There's instructions that you can use to put um, or keep the, the timing set right while you're putting the, the belt on and you basically are just using the belt to hold the uh, cam gears in place but I'm going to try using these little parts and see how they work. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get this timing belt on here and properly adjusted uh, so that we can start putting on all the rest of the stuff onto the engine and uh, get it ready to put back in the car. So let's get going. So here's what we're going to need uh, to do the work. Uh, you're going to see a bunch of uh, alligator clips or paper clips or whatever you want to call these things. Uh, this is one of those uh, cam uh, gear locks that I was talking about. This is the tool that's used to put tension on here. Uh, so this is uh, the other tool or the other uh, part that I needed and then we've got our new hydraulic tensioner and uh, Idler pulley and tensioner pulley um, as well as the belt itself. So um, And then a couple wrenches and whatnot to hold tension. Uh, we're also going to need a helper today uh, Because I did try going through ahead of time just to see if I could do this as a one-man job and I could not so I am going to get a helper today. My beautiful wife will be coming in to help me out a little bit. Uh, but we're going to get things going here. So first thing we're going to do is get the hydraulic tensioner installed as well as the uh, idler pulley installed. So let's go ahead and get that done. So one thing to note, um, depending on which repair manual you have um, or service manual you have for this car, um, the one that I have does not tell you what to set this thing to. Uh, there's no mention of it whatsoever. Uh, there is another uh, repair manual out there um, that does have the information and this is just, uh, supposed to be set to uh, 40 foot pounds. So that's what I've torqued this to is 40 foot pounds. With the idler pulley torqued and in place, we'll go ahead and get the hydraulic tensioner installed, torqued down to spec, as well as the uh, tensioner pulley just installed with the uh, nut just slightly tightened on there so that it can be adjusted later on. Okay, time for a quick interlude. So, in looking on the forums um, and reading different things, there's something that's referred to as the washer trick. Um, that I have decided not to do on here. Uh, I went back and forth on this as to whether or not I thought it was a good idea. Um, and basically what it amounts to is putting a washer in here over the shaft. With the theory being that uh, no matter what, um, if this was to completely fail, you're not going to lose um, enough tension on this that the belt will skip uh, teeth. My concern was if it failed... I, quite honestly, if it really fails, then um, I'm going to have a messed up engine anyways. Um, but I was worried about it breaking, shearing off, um, or basically rubbing and little pieces of metal getting down and then down into here. Um, some people talked about uh, actually tack welding that washer onto the actual um, hydraulic tensioner. And uh, I don't have a the equipment to do tack welding and I don't know anybody who does it uh, so I've just decided not to do it uh, this car is gonna be pretty much a show car 
Um, so I'm not worried about putting thousands and thousands of miles on it. Um, so with that being said, I've basically kind of decided to go without it um, in the hopes that, um, you know, the engineers who put this thing together, hopefully they knew what they were doing. Um, and uh, it's not really a necessary thing. It's kind of a safety feature that some people I think, um, especially people who are doing racing with it, um, tend to put in there. Uh, but like I say, I've just decided not to do that. I'm guessing I did something wrong. You can see just how much play there is. Now, I did try using these gear lock things to make things easier. Maybe that's the reason why I'm having trouble. Let me know in the comments if you've ever used these before or had good luck with them. After checking with a few knowledgeable people on the forum, uh, the conclusion I came to was to actually pull those gear locks out and follow the standard procedure using the alligator clips to hold the belt in place. Uh, this process really worked a lot better for me. So uh, from my standpoint, I don't necessarily think you need to have those gear locks. With the gear locks out, I was able to rework the belt around and get it to be much tighter across the top. And you can see it's in much more aligned. However, um, I am actually one tooth out of a line. So back to the drawing board and try it again. With a little more finesse, I was able to get the belt and all of the timing marks lined up uh, perfectly. So now we just have to go in and adjust the tension on the tensioner pulley, and then we can actually test to make sure everything stays aligned. Astute viewers may notice that I'm really focusing on the rear bank and not so much on the front bank, and that's only because the front bank lined up perfectly, and I forgot to video and show that. The rear bank was what I was really having trouble getting aligned, so uh, once that was aligned, I continued on and forgot to really show the front bank. So at this point, I'm using the fancy tool to put the tension on the tensioner pulley and it actually broke off and I, I think it was really my fault I wasn't putting uh, pressure on it properly I did contact the eBay seller and he very graciously replaced the part uh, within a day or two uh, so I would definitely use uh, that eBay seller again to buy the uh, tensioner with the tool broken I will have to go back and readjust the tension one more time but I wanted to check and see whether or not this stayed in uh, relative time and the instructions say to go ahead and go two full rotations wait about five minutes and then two more rotations and make sure that everything's still in alignment so that's what you see me doing here a few moments later unfortunately i didn't get a good zoomed in view of the cam timing marks but you'll just have to trust me uh, after two rotations and waiting five minutes and two rotations again everything is lined up perfect Well, that's going to do it. So we were able to finally get the belt on uh, with a little bit of help from the wife and uh, a little bit of help from the forums. Uh, again, thank you to uh, the people on 3SI.org 
I really appreciate you jumping in and uh, helping me answer a few questions along the way as I did this. Uh, the belt's now on, and uh, after following the instructions, um, I can go through and rotate it two full uh, turns clockwise, and everything continues to stay lined up, which is awesome. Um, I do need to uh, go back to my eBay seller that I bought that little uh, tool from for torquing the um, or putting the, the right tension on that uh, idler pulley um, since it broke off and I'm not 100% sure that I've got it set right yet so I'm now going to have to try and go get uh, another one so I can make sure that everything is really uh, properly tensioned on there. Uh, so with all that being said, uh, please leave your comments down below. Uh, and be sure to uh, like and subscribe and until next time see ya